As they left the white stone building on their nervously shifting horses, the icy wind came in gusts, moaning across the rooftops, whipping cloaks like banners driving thin clouds across the thin sliver of the moon. With a quiet command to stay close, Land led off down the street. The horses danced and tugged at reins, eager to be away. Rand looked up warily at the buildings they passed, glooming now in the night with their empty windows like eye sockets. Shadows seemed to move. Occasionally there was a clatter, rubble tops by the winds. At least the eyes are gone. His relief was momentary. Why are they gone? Tom and the Emmons fielders made a cluster with him, all keeping close enough to touch one another. Egwene's shoulders were hunched, as if she were trying to ease Bella's hooves to the pavement. Rand did not even want to breathe. Sound might attract attention. Abruptly, he realized that a distance had opened ahead of them, separating them from the water and the Aes Sedai. The two were indistinct shapes a good thirty paces ahead. We are falling behind, he murmured, and booted Cloud to a quicker step. A thin tendril of silver-grey fog drifted low across the street ahead of him. Stop! It was a strangled shout from Moraine, sharp and urgent, but pitched not to carry far. Uncertain, he pulled up short. The splinter of fog lay completely across the street now, slowly fattening, as if more were oozing out of the buildings on either side of the street. It was as thick as a man's arm now. Cloud wickered and tried to back further away, as Egwene and Tom and the others came up on him. Their horses too tossed their heads and bridled against coming too near the fog. Lan and Moraine rode slowly toward the fog, grown to as thick around as a leg, stopping on the other side well back. The ice and ice studied the branch of mist that separated them. Rand shrugged at a sudden inch of fear between his shoulder blades. A faint light accompanied the fog, growing as the foggy tentacle became fatter, but still only a little more than the moonlight. The horses shifted uneasily, even Aldeeb and Mandar. What is it? Nynaeve asked. The evil of Shadar Logoth, Moraine replied. Mashadar, unseen, unthinking, moving through the city as aimlessly as a worm burrows through the earth. If it touches you, you will die. Rand and the others let their horses dance a few quick steps back, but not too far. As much as Rand would have given to be three of the Aes Sedai, she was as safe as home compared to what lay around them. Then how do we join you? Egwene said. Can you kill it? Clear away? Moraine's laugh was bitter and short. Mashadar is vast, girl, as vast as Shadow Logarth itself. The whole White Tower could not kill it. If I damaged it enough to let you pass, drawing that much of the One Power would pull the Halfman like a trumpet call. And Mashadar would rush in to heal whatever harm I did, rush in and perhaps catch us in its net. Rand exchanged looks with Egwene, then asked her questions again. Moraine sighed before answering. I do not like it, but what must be done, must be done. This thing will not be above ground everywhere. Other streets will be clear. See that star? She twisted in her saddle to point to a red star low in the eastern sky. Keep on toward that star, and it will bring you to the river. Whatever happens, keep moving toward the river. Go as quickly as you can, but above all, make no noise. There are still the Trollocs, remember, and four halfmen. But how will we find you again? Egwene protested. I will find you, Moraine said. Be assured, I can find you. Now be off. This thing is utterly mindless, but it can sense food. Indeed, ropes of silver grey had lifted from the larger body. They drifted, wavering, like the tentacles of a hundred arms on the bottom of a waterwood pond. When Rand looked up from the thick trunk of opaque mist, the water and the Aes Sedai were gone. He licked his lips and met his companion's eyes. They were as nervous as he was. And something worse... They all seemed to be waiting for someone else to move first. Night and ruin surrounded them. The Fades were out there somewhere, and the Trollocs, maybe around the next corner. The tentacles of fog drifted nearer, halfway to them now, and no longer wavering. They had chosen their intended prey. Suddenly, he missed Moraine very much. Everyone was still staring, wondering which way to go. He turned Cloud, and the Grey broke into a half-trot, tugging against the reins to go faster. As if moving had made him the leader, everyone follows. With Moraine gone, there was no one to protect them should Mordith appear, and the Trollocs. And... Ran forced himself to stop thinking. He would follow the Red Star. He could hold on to that fort. 
Three times they had to backtrack from a street blocked from side to side by a hill of stone and brick the horses could never have crossed. Bran could hear the others breathing, short and sharp, just shy of panic. He gritted his teeth to stop his own panting. You have to at least make them think you're not afraid. You're doing a good job, Woolhead. You'll get everybody out safely. They rounded the next corner. A wall of fog bathed the broken pavement with a light as bright as a full moon. Streamers as thick as their horses broke toward them. Nobody waited. Wheeling, they galloped away in a tight knot with no heed for the clatter of the hooves they raised. Two Trollocs stepped into the streets before them, not ten spans away. For an instant, the humans and the Trollocs just stared at one another, each more surprised than the other. Another pair of Trollocs appeared, and another, and another, colliding with the ones in front, folding into a shocked mass at the sight of the humans. Only for an instant did they remain frozen, though. Guttural howls echoed from the buildings, and the Trollocs bounded forward. The humans scattered like quail. Rand's grey reached full gallop in three strides. This way, he shouted, but he heard the same cry from five throats. A hasty glance over his shoulder showed him his companions disappearing in as many directions, Trollocs pursuing them all. Three Trollocs ran at his own heels, catchpoles waving in the air. His skin crawled as he realized they were matching clouds stride for stride. He dropped low on Cloud's neck and urged the grey on, chased by thick cries. The street narrowed ahead, broken top buildings leaning out drunkenly. Slowly the empty windows filled with a silvery glow, a dense mist bulging outward, Mashadar. Ran risked a glance over his shoulder. The Trollocs still ran less than fifty paces back. The light from the fog was enough to see them clearly. A fade rode behind them now, and they seemed to flee the halfman as much as to pursue Rand. Ahead of Rand, half a dozen grey tendrils wavered from the windows, a dozen feeling the air. Cloud tossed his head and screamed, but Rand dug his heels in brutally, and the horse lunged forward wildly. The tendrils stiffened as Rand galloped between them, but he crouched low on Cloud's back and refused to look at them. The way beyond was clear. If one of them touches me, light! He booted Cloud harder, and the horse leapt forward into the welcome shadows. With Cloud still running, he looked back as soon as the glow of Mashadar began to lessen. The wavering grey tentacles of Mashadar blocked half the street, and the Trollocs were balking, but the Fade snatched a whip from its saddle bow, cracking it over the heads of the Trollocs with a sound like a lightning bolt, popping sparks in the air. Crouching, the Trollocs lurched after Rand. The halfman hesitated, black cowl studying Mashadar's reaching arms, before it too spurred forward. The thickening tentacles of fog swung uncertainly for a moment, then struck like vipers. At least two latched to each Trolloc, bathing them in grey light. Muzzled heads went back to stream, but fog rolled over open mouths and in, eating the howls. Four leg-thick tentacles whipped around the Fade, and the half and its black horse twitched as if dancing, till the cowl fell back, bearing that pale, eyeless face. The Fade shrieked. There was no sound from that cry, any more than from the Trollocs. But Suffolk came through, a piercing whine just beyond hearing, like all the hornets in the world, digging into Rand's ears with all the fear that could exist.